Hanif Kara, a structural engineer, co-founder of AKT2, a structural engineering practice in London, and professor of architectural technology at the Graduate School of Design, Harvard. I'm here to tell you a little bit about my career and how I got to where I am. Now, you might begin by wondering why an engineer is speaking on what is predominantly an architectural forum. Well, the reason is that the, the two disciplines uh, since the early 19th century have been siblings. Through the Industrial Revolution, technology um, and the growth of technology made it such that the architects and engineers had to come together to produce the most incredible buildings. History has shown that as siblings, the architect is the creator and the engineer supports the ideas and also often contributes to how to put things together. That's the reason why I'm here to speak to you. I arrived in the, this country as an immigrant at about the time when I was supposed to be taking um, my own levels from East Africa. With little knowledge of English and therefore at that age, it was only the only choice I had was really to take an apprenticeship in a in what was a steel fabricator's yard in 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 Northwich in Cheshire. Through that, I attended a, a day release course as well as two evening classes in order to learn to be a draftsman in uh, and making buildings in steel. That uh, part of my uh, development was wonderful because I was also exposed to going into the welding shop and on site quite often at a very young age. I was then fortunate enough three years into that to get, get a very good grade for my only national certificate, which is equivalent of A-levels, and through that apprenticeship and my company uh, sponsored me to attend university. I took up civil engineering largely at Salford University in Manchester, although I spent a short while uh, at UMIST in Manchester too. That um, degree um, and fast forwarding from that, I then took the route to engineering straight out of university, which uh, involved about 10 years of work up in the north, largely working on hardcore engineering uh, building types like offshore oil rigs, nuclear power stations, factories, and roller coasters, and so on. That 10 years was kind of defined me um, and, and brought out the, the, the value of the physics and maths that, that I was aware of and made me a, a relatively competent structural engineer. My interest, however, was always in, uh, in working into design and, the, and a bigger picture beyond just making buildings stand up. I moved to London um, soon after that to work on the Battersea Power Station development and um, supervising the demolition of that. Um, and then there was a, a crash in the market. It was the years of Margaret Thatcher. Um, we were about to lose jobs and uh, the construction industry was beginning to suffer. At that point, I chose to make a leap to join Anthony Hunt Associates for a short while. It was three or four years of of, of, uh, of work with them, um, at which point we were hit by the 1993 crash of the exchange rate mechanism. The world ended and most of us were thinking that there would be no more careers, no more work um, for us. Um, the industry was shrinking fast, inflation was very high, house prices were rocketing. So survival was, was the next um, agenda for, for me personally. So in, in 96, um, I created with my colleagues, um, Albert Taylor and Robin Adams, our own practice, which today is known as AKT2. The motivations behind that was to stay in a career that I find rather um, passion, passionate. I find it interesting, the, the whole of the built environment, uh, and, and also equally to, to try and define uh, the future of the disciplines of architecture and our own discipline of engineering through the lens of design. That was the, the motivation. And the early years were spent working for a lot of contractors because we had a lot of knowledge of how to make things 
and we were able to go in and do very quick designs. What was very interesting is that um, in, I'd made a conscious choice also to keep my hand into a second career or a parallel, uh, parallel existence, which was teaching. So I started teaching at the architectural associations during the evenings and weekends, largely um, teaching um, technology to architects, but also working with architects who were up and coming. This was a, a, a kind of way of, of me to stay fresh and understand the new questions that we might be faced with um, and also how that might influence our practice and our profession um, going forward. So I, I had these parallel existences and the practice became more and more successful. Within four years, in, in the year 2000, we were very fortunate that we won the, we were part of the team that won the Sterling Prize for Peckham Library with Will Allsop, which was a, a, a kind of trampoline for me because it felt that we were reassured in that, that the field of design was something to, to work on and take it forward. The other um, uh, recognition at that point for us was that we were also very fortunate in that we feel that, you know, and then I would advise this of anybody who is trying to take the career uh, today, be conscious of what's going on in the world. We had become the first generation of the internet because in 93 that was invented. And in 96, when we started our practice, one of the reasons for keeping a hand in education and practicing at the cutting edge was really to, to, to dig deep into the, digital, the world of the digital and the new technologies that that would give birth to. So keep, keep an eye on that. Um, going on from 2000, um, we went on to build some incredible buildings all over the world uh, and were very fortunate continuously to collaborate with some of the best architects that the world has to offer. We were fortunate also to work on many different types of buildings and bridges and uh, cultural buildings and so on. At about the same time, I was appointed um, at the Commission for Architecture and the Built Environment as a commissioner, which reassured me that the wider discussion on design was the path that I should take and that the, the, the future of architecture was reassured, the future of the built environment could be improved by having this kind of organization. I was uh, at that point at another peak in my career because I was appointed Professor of Architectural Technology at the KTH in Stockholm for three years where I was teaching. And that was quite a, a height because they had never uh, appointed an engineer before. Um, and in that sense, you know, that gave me uh, another peak because I was then snapped up into the big world of Harvard at the Graduate School of Design, where I have been a professor for architectural technology for the past 12 years. In parallel, the practice has grown to about 350 people. And my main and, and, and important project throughout the last 25 years has been the construction of my own practice, construction of the next generations within the practice that can face up to the challenges that the world throws at us. So, Going on, um, I, I see the, the whole discipline and the, uh, the way in which we are moving forward today to, be, uh, uh, to have a, a fantastic future. I think architecture and the built environment after agriculture is the most important thing we leave behind and, and touch the earth with. And therefore, I think it's an incredible career and it's very fortunate that you can walk past the things you work on, you know, the buildings you do daily, the incredible experiences of people, seeing people smile as they use these buildings. Equally, you, you end up, um, you know, doing new and different things on a daily basis, year by year. Every project is different from small projects to large projects. So I find that for those who are looking into the career, it is a way of life. It is something that you will enjoy forever and ever, I, I would say. You will see it, you will see the results um, firsthand. It isn't easy and does take a long time, but it is a, a career that I would recommend to all of you. Of the future, well, I was one of the um, fortunate people to have lived through the late 70s and the early 80s through the race riots 
the um, concerns about employment, the shrinking of economy, inequity in society. I lived through that age and grew up through that age. And that resonates quite a lot with what's going on uh, currently in the world. So my, my hope is, and, and I believe quite strongly, that the challenges that we're faced with have to, have to be seen as opportunities again, if you're thinking of taking this career. And in that, the climate crisis uh, is probably one of the most interesting challenges humanity faces. It's a massive opportunity for you if you join the career, either as an architect or as an engineer, in that career to have an influence on the protecting the rights of the next generations. I feel that it's, a, it's an opportunity that most of you uh, would, would engage with and find interesting and probably um, enjoy what I think is the most important thing about, about my career is, is it's become a way of life and I absolutely adore it. Thank you very much.